Hello. The objective of this video is to look at the current status of the sick and the sing and to look at the dispatch mechanism that fixes prices in both systems. We will start with demand. On the horizontal axis are the megawatts that are going to be consumed. So in the sick, currently demand varies between 5,500 megawatts and 7,000 megawatts. Lowest demand is at night when people sleep and highest demand is in the late evening when people are at home watching TV and cooking. In 2021, demand is going to be expected to be between 6,000 and 8,000 in the SIC. Now, if we consider SIC plus SIC, in 2021, demand is expected between 8,000 and 10,000 megawatts. Now, we're going to look at the supply. On the horizontal axis, the same megawatts, which will be the installed capacity, multiplied by the average plant factor on a monthly basis. On the vertical axis, we're going to be looking at the cost of supplying these technolo different technologies. So first 2016 demand is between 5,000 and 7,000 and supply is first served on a hydro base which is roughly 2,000 megawatts at zero marginal cost. Then comes wind 300 megawatts, PV 200 megawatts also at zero dollar per megawatt hour. Then we have a big base of coal which is roughly 3,000 megawatts at a variable cost oscillating between 30 and 45 currently. Then we have LNG combined cycles, roughly 1000 megawatts at a cost of 60, uh, 50 to 60 dollars per megawatt hour. And then we have dam hydro, which serves as a, as a stability and prices ranging between 30 and 60. On top of that, we have LNG engines or open cycles with a cost between 70 and 90 dollars per megawatt hour. And finally, we have diesel engines at $100 plus. So this is what we call the order of merit and this is the order in which the technologies are dispatched in the system. So our demand is between 5,000 and 7,000 and we can see that this demand is currently satisfied either by coal, LNG or dam, i.e. with a price ranging from 30 to $60 per megawatt hour. If we now look at seasons, we can see that seasons have an influence on hydro, PV and wind, but mainly on hydro which is the main oscillator. Hydro is going to be varying between 1,500 and 2,500, depending on the rain that falls uh, in Chile. And this is going, obviously, to have a, 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 an impact on all the other technologies. So let's look at a dry year. Our demand is still the same, between 5 and 7,000. So less hydro in the system, PV plus wind, our coal, and obviously the, here the demand is satisfied with LNG, less dam, and some LNG open cycles or engines need to be fired in order to satisfy peak demand. So we're looking at $19 per megawatt hour peak prices that can be observed when 7,000 megawatts are consumed. In wet years or winter season, demand is the same. Here we have 2,500 megawatts of hydro, same PV, same wind, the coal on top, LNG, big dam on top and then obviously uh, the rest of the technology. So here we can see that the prices are going to be oscillating much more between 30 and 60 dollars per megawatt hour. Let's now look what happens in 2021. Here we have the SIC merging with the SING. So as we saw before, demand is going to be impacted and it's going to be much higher for growth reasons and for these merge reasons. So demand is going to be oscillating between 8,000 and 10,500 megawatts. So here our load curve is the same, 2,000 a bit more of hydro at zero. We have more wind in 2021, 700 megawatts at zero. We have much more solar, 1,200 megawatts of PV at zero variable cost. And we have a huge base of coal because the sink uh, is, uh, has a lot of coal that comes into the system with a cost of 30 to 50, and we say 50 without, because we don't consider carbon tax yet. Dam is more or less unchanged with a variable cost of 30 to 50. Then on top of that, we still have our uh, combined cycles LNG, 2000 megawatts because we have more coming from the sink. And on top of that, our all type of engines, LNG and diesel. So three things have changed between 2016 and 2021. More renewable, much more renewable. More coal because we have 2000 megawatts coming from the sink that are gonna be plugged into the sink and more expensive fuel prices if we believe the um, International Energy Agency expectations. 
So with this new configuration, demand is going to be expected to be fulfilled with coal, dam, and eventually LNG in peaks. So prices would be oscillating between 30, 50, or eventually 70. What would be the impact of seasons with this new configuration? Well, uh, seasons still affect the hydro, obviously, and, and the other renewable technologies. But since the hydro has now a very small proportion of the whole uh, load system, and, and especially if we compare it to the coal and dam capacity, its impact is supposed to be very small. So seasons will not affect prices very much and will still remain between 30 and 70. So now we're going to look at the daily dispatch. So here we're going to look at the graph in a different way. On the horizontal axis, we're going to put the, the hours of the day and on the vertical graph, the megawatts uh, of uh, installed capacity and, and demand. So we first going to graph the demand curve. So demand starts at night uh, with coming down, reaching its lowest point at 4 in the morning. Then we have going up in the morning. Uh, we have a plateau and then a going down for lunch, another valley in the evening, and a peak demand in the, in the late evening. So how is the demand satisfied? So first we have a big hydro base of 2,000 roughly megawatts. Then on top of that we have a wind, which is more night than day profile. Then we have solar on top of that, and solar has a special curve, as you know, reaching its peak at, at noon, 2 in the afternoon, with 2,500 megawatts. Then on top of solar, we have our coal that almost satisfies all the demand uh, unless the peaks. And the peaks themselves can be fulfilled with other technologies, quick start technologies, which are mainly to either dams or LNG engines. So if we look at costs, all our renewable base is at zero. Coal, again, is expected to be between $30 and $50 per megawatt hour. And our peaks is going to be the question between 50 and 70, depending on the, on the fuel prices and depending on transmission issues. In some areas of the system, we can still see $100 and plus uh, in peaks. So to summarize this part, 2021, sequencing and merge, demand will be oscillating between 8,000 and 10,500 megawatts and will be satisfied mainly by coal with a price between $30 and $50 per megawatt hour and either dam or LNG with a price between $50 and $70 per megawatt hour. So, our conclusions. 2016, we will see prices between $35 and $60 per megawatt hour with peaks uh, at roughly $90. 2021, we will see prices between $35 and $70 per megawatt hour due to three reasons. More renewables in the system, PV and wind more coal coming from the sink with 2,000 megawatts and higher fuel prices that would justify uh, the peaks uh, that a bit higher uh, at $70. 2025 will depend. Uh, it's going to be a balance of technologies between more renewables in the system, PV and wind, with prices oscillating between 45 and 60 eventually, and grid stability technologies, which are going to be dam. LNG or eventually storage technologies at 60 plus dollars per megawatt hour. So let's keep in mind we have a huge base of hydro and coal that justify prices between 35 and 60, eventually 70. And definitely no more high spot prices are to be expected. Finally, it's also important to bear in mind the next tenders that are coming. The current tender in July faces demand starting in 2021 and 2022 for 12 and a half thousand gig oil hour per year. But at the end of this year the government is tendering some new demand starting in 2023 for another two and a half thousand gig oil hour per year and next year's uh, some new tenders are coming for peak volumes as well in 2025-2026 uh, start date. This is definitely a lot of energy that will require new supply. Which supply? Well since coal is out of the question and due to environmental cases it will be eventually energy but for sure new renewables, PV and wind, and certainly storage is to be taken into account for these uh, future tenders. Thank you very much. We hope this has been useful for you.